Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! And the up the old fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! Oh, right. Of course, it's always about you, isn't it? You think you can follow that act? Hi, this is Nicholas Vince, and you're listening to the Metal Hand of God podcast. Don't worry if you don't speak it out alive. We'll give you your money back. Guaranteed. Welcome back to the Metal Hand of God podcast. I am your host, Wayne, and with me is that gentleman over there, Mr. Oh, I lost you. You lost me. Vernon Smith, say your name. Oh, Vernon Smith. That's Here's right. Vernon's. There you go. Yeah, yeah. See, we lost him, but that's okay. And we have a returning guest, Mr. Yeah. Casey Jost. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me back. Oh, of course, man. I'm awesome. glad we finally could Anytime. arrange this. You know, I know we were supposed to do it, and then... We had hurricane issues and then scheduling yeah. issues and then it's just been, but thank God you're back, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming on well, and doing this. Yeah. Th- I'm, I'm thankful that you guys are, are doing okay. And that the podcast came back. I think that's the, that's the, the best part of this is that we get to do it now. Yeah. And you know what, to be honest with you, this yep. is only the second show back. Like we've been actually, I've been plugging some like old shows every once in a while because we didn't want to lose yeah. complete stuff. But, um, we haven't been fully actually recording with guests till yesterday, and this is our you're our second guest back, man. And I'm it's, honored. It's awesome. Thank you so, so much. Good. Yeah, thanks for it. Thanks for having me. This was so fun last time, so I'm pumped. So how's awesome. it been, man? What what you been up to? I mean, uh, you know, you know what what happened to us. What's been going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, nothing much. Uh, my I, I actually. Um, my wife is expecting, so we got a kid coming in Dude, December. That's fantastic yeah. because we were t- remember we were talking about that, and I'm sure we were we were we were actually sitting there talking about my child and and Vernon's kid, and we were sitting there saying, you know, th- my kid was at the bad part of his life, you know, like being a little jerk and this and that. Yeah, and you were like, you were going, huh? <laughs> 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 but no, that's that's I'm sure. That's fantastic. I, I, I'm equal parts excited and terrified for sure. Oh man, dude. Look, I, I oh, that's awesome. It's the greatest. I you know, I know people say this all the time, but look, I waited till I was in my I would waited till I was forty to have a kid. And, oh wow, that's good to know. And you know, I regret I waited this long, but you know what? I am so grateful that I have him because he is like the best thing in my life. You know, him and my wife, yeah. of course, but I mean, it's just the most incredible moment of my life was my son being born, period. Yeah, I, I am. I, I'm definitely all that stuff is 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 new for me in terms of I, I didn't realize I'd be this excited for it because for a, for a long time, I mean, like when I was younger, like a like a like a 23 year old, I was like, I'm definitely going to have kids. I can't wait to have kids. Right. And then like. Mm-hmm. As I got a little older, like, you know, I, like my wife and I have such a good relationship that we were like, let's not rock the boat. <laughs> like, let's, yeah. we, were, we were really like, I don't we we're really like existential about the whole idea of having kids and like going back and forth. And it was just um, we waited. And now, you know, I'm 36. She's 37. And we good were times. like, I think I think I think the pandemic and also getting a dog in the pandemic made us realize like, oh, our favorite thing is kind of our family and let's expand it a little bit that's fantastic dude that's you know and um our our guest let yesterday or according to podcast world uh last week's guest (laughs) um yeah uh was was a a hip-hop artist by the name of smo he used to go by big smo but now he is a vegan so he lost a lot of weight so he's no longer big um so (laughs) so 
uh, he was on and he, you know, that's another thing he was saying that, you know, it's all about, you know, expanding things. And when he was, uh, uh, how to say good things that have come out of the pandemic, other than stuff that you see on the news, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to put it like he has done so much good stuff with his life, you know, while he mm. was while he was off, like because he used to tour constantly like he was touring, right. you know, he was in another city, another state, you know, doing this. He couldn't, you know, he had to stop and eat fast food. And he was really he said, basically, man, I was 390 pounds killing myself with fast food and, you know, all this other shit pandemic hit. He said, I'm down to 230, man. He says, I've been vegan. I dropped wow. all this weight, you know, you know, and it's really made a good life positive, you know. That's great. With the pot, with the, yeah. with this pandemic. And and I like to hear stories about people who have turned this shit that we've been in for almost two years into something positive. And that's fantastic, dude. I'm so I, pr- yeah, pr- happy I'm for I'm the you. opposite. I've actually become big Casey because I, I've had to <laughs> switch my name because I've definitely... I've grown Man. in I, like it's funny. It sounds like an innuendo, but I've grown in places that I didn't realize. Oh but yeah, I, it's. I thought like for the most part you just get kind of like a beer belly at this age, but no, it's nah. like my every part got thicker, and <laughs> not the, like the the good thick with extra C's, <laughs> like just a, a a thickness that's like oh I I actually it's gonna be sweatpants again today. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Look, like, like, I don't know I. My my wife is a lot younger than I am. She's she's uh she just turned thirty, and I, and I'm I'm forty seven. So, like, mm-hmm. she makes fun of me because she's like stop. <laughs> she's always like stop being so old. I'm like I can't help it, man. That's who I am. <laughs> but I know. But you know it 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 happens with age, man. You you know you kind of get a little more relaxed. I mean you you've got you've been ma- you're married. You know you're gonna have a kid. You're gonna get into that dad situation. You're not yeah. going to you're going to take care of yourself because you want to take care of yourself for your kid and your family. But you're not going to take care of yourself that much. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I'm like, I, I, I you know, I'm, I, I used to be second place and I got a dog and now I'm third place in my own life. <laughs> you might as well. Yeah, for, yeah. You might as well forget being any place once the kid gets there. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know, but but I, I yeah, the dog has been good because it makes me walk more. So I've been taking like extra long walks and like. I, I kind of like I'm I'm taking a little sober October, so I'm, you know I'm getting I'm getting my life together. That's awesome, dude. Nice. That's really really cool. Yeah, um, it's funny. I, a friend of mine was about to have a kid like a, a year or two ago, and he was like, "All right, I have like you know six more months left before I have to f- like you know in I have this much this much time left. I have to fix everything about me. <laughs> <laughs> like I have to all, like I have to start going to therapy. I have to fix all the problems I have so I don't give it to this kid. Yep. Yeah, you look just there's nothing you can do about it, man. Once it once it starts oh, yeah. coming, you just might as well just roll with the punches. And that's right. And and like uh, what from what I've learned um, is when you talk to your child, uh, don't don't baby talk to them. I, I will. Yeah, I will not. You know, I mean, I I, I tell this because um, uh, you could tell the difference between a child who's been baby talked to and a child who hasn't. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't really? mean, yeah. And I don't mean, I don't mean sit there and and sit there and say, you know. I don't know, explain like Newton's laws and shit to your kid at, at you know, <laughs> at six months old. But when you're talking right. to him, don't, don't, do, because my nephew, uh, you know, I love him to death, but he was baby talked and, and, and you could tell the difference. They're like um, a year apart from my son. He's, he just turned five. My kid's about to turn six. So he's like in that maybe six to eight months difference. And my kid is ridiculously like when he talks to him, uh, my, uh, my in-laws always say, God, are you like 22 years old? You know, <laughs> a- a- in comparison to the other kid. And it's weird. It, you know, you see how they're, they both been raised in good homes. It's just, to me, I think it was the babying to, you know, the other kid. I'm not, right. I'm not really sure. I just, just, to me personally, that's what I see. I mean, Vernon, what do you think, man? I mean, I don't know. Well, uh, I mean, to me, it a... I did that, but it was it was more in the way of just like explaining, yeah, why you can't do this. Like, like I was, I've never been like the, you know, God, God, because Google. I said so kind yeah. of parent. Me, right. me either. You shouldn't do this. 
because this is what could happen, and I've known people that have done that, and right. I've done this myself, and it doesn't work out the way you think, and mm-hmm. your friends don't know anything, even though, like, they're, because most of her friends are, like, a year older than her, because she, like, started pre-K when she was, like, had just turned four. Right. So it's, like, a lot of the kids in her class are, you know, like, she's 11, they're all 12 now. Um, right. And, and it's just, I remember, like, as a kid, anyone who was like a year or two older than me, I thought they knew everything. Exactly. And, but, but it's like, no, they, they don't know any more than I do, but I'm listening to them in high school where it's like, yeah, if you have sex standing up, they can't get pregnant. <laughs> they must know, you know? Um, totally. And, I love that stuff. Yeah. I, uh, I, one thing I know for sure. If you're on acid, drink milk and it'll bring you down. And mm-hmm. like, and it's like, well, what do you know? You're, you're fucking 15. <laughs> you don't know anything. I truly uh, thought it was orange slices. Oh, oh, you see, you see, you did it wrong. Uh, see, I, you did it wrong. I thought that kicked it in. <laughs> like orange made it more intense. And wow. Really? Yeah. That's, that's what I've heard. Um, that's so funny. I, the, another thing I heard was, that if you are, you know, if you smoke weed and then you have a Newport cigarette like 15 minutes later, it brings uh-huh. your weed, your, it bring, it kicks your high up. Are you right. fucking kidding me? <laughs> like the menthol of a Newport cigarette will, will yeah. kick it back up. That's what everybody, all of all of my all friends these in freshman Staten scientists, Island. you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, well, hey, hey, this, that was uh, that was Facebook before it was Facebook, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That was because I mean, information. Yeah, because yeah, now it's the say Now everybody just listens to people on Facebook, so it's okay. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like, I figure if I do, if I am like open with her about things, like as a kid, then whenever yeah. she does get older, I can be like, "Look, these things that your friends are saying, it's not true. I've done it. My friends have done it, and I've never lied to you in the past. So you know that it's right. not just me saying like." If you smoke pot, you're going to die. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> Look, it's, right. it's, it's not what's going to happen. Yeah, you just I mean, get pregnant because it'll lower your inhibition. Yeah, so you know, my, my whole th- my whole thing was my parents were always open with me. Always like it, right. I remember I remember for a fact that when we were watching The Breakfast Club one time and they said the word dildo and I walked over to my mom and dad, I said, Mom, what's a dildo? <laughs> And my mom just looked she at me. The drawer. My, no, my mom looked at me and just she just said, "Ask your dad." <laughs> that yeah, was the that, one time that I'll means... never forget that. <laughs> That's great. I, I I think I had said the phrase. Um, I think I had called at like a Thanksgiving dinner. I think I had, I was young, and I think I called my brother a circle jerk in front of everyone. <laughs> and I, I just thought it meant like a like a worse kind of jerk. <laughs> right. And right. Yeah. He was just like, do you even know what that means? And I was like, yes. And then it was just really quiet for a long time. <laughs> you were like, what the hell? This kid's talking about. <laughs> Man, you were talking about uh, this is uh, this is the I saved this topic for this day because I had the fact that you were coming on. Um, but I didn't know you were going to say you grew in certain places. So this really adds to <laughs> adds to the story. Um, uh-huh. The other night, uh, my wife was like. You're not going to believe what I found on the internet. I was like, what did you find? She goes, I just saw a blurb from somebody that said Howard Stern had a um, micro penis contest. Okay. And I think I've heard of this. And she's like, we have to find it online to see what this is about. So we found it. We found the contest online. Wow. Guys. You ever want to feel better about yourself? Watch that video. <laughs> I mean, I know what if what if you say that now and then I I go watch and I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> dude, these guys are huge. Let, let, I would have won, <laughs> dude. Let me tell you something. If you would have won, you I mm, no, I don't be, believe that. I don't believe you, that at all. You wouldn't be having a kid. Yeah, where they, <laughs> dude? Where they? Were there rules? Like, can you fill me in on like what the no? Like, what the all right? So it, it, it was basically okay. the way it was was it basically like he he got a bunch of guys that said they had small penises, micro penises, or whatever, and he actually it was like thirty people, and he told like um I forget the guy's name, but he goes by Baba Booey or whatever or the dude on the show, yeah, uh, yeah his yeah. his producer or whatever, and um he uh. He had them all in the, the green room and he told them all, he says, well, what we're going to do is you all are going to get stripped completely naked 
and then walk one in single file line into the studio and you're going to be judged. It was, there was a panel of judges and you're going to be judged by all these people. Marv Albert was one of the judges, by the way, I just want to say, um, how long ago was this? This was a, this was a while. Like he was an older, he was a younger guy in, the, in this video. Um, but you get judged by, you know, how big your penis is. Then, then you get, then there's a talent portion where they have to sing. <laughs> That's so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Look, dude, look. That's so interesting. I guess like, cause they want to see if you have like big dick energy or not. I guess. And if, <laughs> if you, if you do, maybe that's bad. So you have to really, well, you have I, to really sing poorly. I, guess. I put it to you this way. The three guys that were at the end that two of them looked like they had vaginas and one of them had one testicle, one boob, and uh, there was something else wrong with him as well. Well, you, you know, it's, I think it's Eye of the Beholder, right? Because I think there's something else right with him. Right? You know, <laughs> my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. But, you know, I mean, I, I actually like, I like that they're, you know, this is probably not, <laughs> to be honest, Howard Stern's probably not doing this in this way. But I think, you know, that we're celebrating these these extreme differences. Right. And uh, yeah, that we're all we're all you know, learning and seeing and seeing uh, you know seeing another uh, how another perspective on it. And I you know it, that's the thing. You know, people would say like, oh, that's you know that thing in life makes you lose, but in this case, it makes you win. Man, and look, nice. and especially if, if it is so small that you haven't been able to get with a girl, if you have a boob of your own. Mm. Dude, well, wait, fucking gold. Wait, what? That, that's, I'm sorry, but two of those dudes had innies. Like, literally, it comes with a boob. Like, literally, you don't need to look for anyone else. You, <laughs> you, you can just stay at home. Well, I, here's the thing: is I was just kind of amazed. Save your money. I was just amazed by the whole the whole situation. Like when I was watching, I was just this is unreal. Like I, you know, first off, I mean, of course, we knew there was penises of all sizes. <laughs> Second off, this made me feel like I was Ron Jeremy. <laughs> mm. and and third of third of all three of those guys actually he he gave the the runners all three of them he gave the prize to all three of them which was a cruise to uh wherever with um i believe people from the bunny ranch like all the hooker, no. hookers from the bunny ranch or something wait wait <laughs> what's the bunny ranch that's uh that's a, it's a like legal, legal it's a, a legal brothel in, yeah in nevada in vegas yeah because at first I thought you meant like the bunny house or whatever the Playboy Mansion is. I, I don't know because they're the Playboy bunnies, right? But then right. R- ranch makes it feel weirder. There, there <laughs> so was that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. There was actually a TV show on HBO that was the bunny. I think it was called the Bunny Ranch. Oh, right. Yeah. It was called wow. something, but it was about the Bunny Ranch, which was the only legal brothel in Nevada. Yeah. This is this that. is all out of my pay grade. I, I. I this is a whole. You're, you're introducing me to an entire universe. Tell your wife between... I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know about it either. I, I forgot about this. I remember my my uh, ex wife used to watch it, and that's probably why we're divorced now. Probably. <laughs> uh, Pretty <laughs> wild segue from having a kid to it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like, well, yeah. yeah, that you know, uh, and it's really funny. As I was gonna say, I was gonna say that to you too. I was like, yeah, so Casey, you really expect to be on here talking about micro penis judging? <laughs> You know, I, I, you know, I, I guess if I was having a boy, I'd probably be dealing with some sort of micro penis for a little while, right? Um, but I am having a girl, so that's oh, okay, awesome, awesome dude, awesome. Congratulations! Unfortunately, she won't be able to make the contest. Well, you know what? You'd be surprised because those dudes <laughs> probably have the same junk. To be honest, it was it was, I'm, dude. I. I I'm still stunned. My wife actually turned. She's like, I can't watch this anymore. It's freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, I'm with her. But you know, but <laughs> but I have this problem where no matter how bad something is, if I start it, I have to finish it. And Whoa. so I sat there and watched the entire. Like, it was only like 35 minutes, but I mean, I was like sitting there watching this ridiculous <laughs> thing. I've done That's that with certain teeth. Batman forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say, I've done that with like certain TV shows where I've like hated it the entire way through. Yeah. And then like my wife is like, why do you keep watching it then? And I'm like, well, I, I started it. 
But it would be very different. I, I don't think I would continue that. I gotta learn the secret of the island. Right? It also de- yeah, that's right. <laughs> it also depends on how many episodes because if something's like, yeah, if it's a lost and like maybe I'm not into it early on, like I'm not gonna continue. Like, for example, and this gets a lot of flack, but I really didn't like season two of Breaking Bad, especially the way it ended. And that's where I stopped. Wow. So I've never, so I, I kind of like was so frustrated with the way that season two ended. I did not continue. And people are always like, but it's the greatest show ever. But I'm like, how could it be? It, it really, <laughs> it, it's really one of the best shows I've ever watched. Yeah. Um, like the second season, I understand what you mean. But yeah. really, really, if you sat down and started watching season three and like, I'll, I'll like it again. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it makes a big turn and it's really good. Okay. See, for me, if anything is on, I will watch it. Like I will stop and I'll be like, "Oh well, shit is is Gordon gonna turn this restaurant around? Like, <laughs> right? What's, what's gonna? Oh, oh well, I've seen this one. Yeah, this is the one where they had the. Uh, they were just focusing. They had too many items on the menu, and you still I'll watch still it. Yeah, yeah, watch it again. Yeah, same. And, and like anything could be on and i'll I, like I'll, I'll like i'm putting on my shoes and i'm like in the middle of just tying the laces and i'll just freeze and watch whatever it is on there like oh is the guy called lizard gonna make it out of this one i don't know <laughs> yeah. i truly love um like format television you know stuff that's like uh shark tank or chopped and oh, recently yeah. i i watched there's two new episodes of project runway which i've never seen in my entire life and I liked it so much that now I, I would have started at season one, but the earliest season I could find, which was on Amazon Prime, was season six. And it is a phenomenal show that is a joy, a pure joy to watch. I can't believe I'm so late to this party. Tim right. Gunn is like one of my favorite television characters of all time. Not even a character, mm-hmm. just a personality. And Heidi Klum is just like tells us how it is. I never realized all these characters that are on this show. Yeah. Are, and like – there's so many quotable things make it work. I mean, like I, I, you know what I mean? Now I feel like I'm a, I'm a designer, you know, you know, like, I watched, <laughs> I watched that show, uh, from season one to maybe, maybe six. And then I stopped. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, but I enjoyed watching it. I think it's, a, I think it's a great show. I mean, it's fun to watch. I, I like to see what these people come up with. You know, mm-hmm. um, but mm-hmm. I'm like that. I'll, I'll, dude. I've watched every season of uh, what was it, um, Ink Master, the tattoo show, like ridiculously. Yep. I watched all that. Oh. I, I watch, you know, in, in, dude. Dude, I used to watch all of the celebrity reality love shows. Oh, VH1, dude. Flavor, I mean, Flavor, Flavor of, of Love. love. Oh, like, dude, those things I, were the greatest TV ever. Yeah. I love New York. Like I, I watched all of them and I knew them all. And I watched it so much that I even made like a, a parody comic about it. Just <laughs> yes. I was, and I love, and, and, and I love that comic, by the way, it's probably one of my favorite things you've ever done. Oh, you saw it? Oh, cool. I, I own it. I own it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> have you, have you watched rock of love? Yes. Oh, yeah. Brett Michaels. So, of course. Yeah. So I, I, I think, I believe it's rock of love. Q from Joker is, is absolutely obsessed with it. He makes everyone watch it. And we were we were hanging and he he put on episodes and I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. It's just it was such an era of like people saying really outlandish things. Yes. And like also like being mean was so like popular at the time. Like it really we really lost that being mean thing, which probably is for the better. But like even on Project Runway in season six, they're like fully mean to each other on television. And you're like, really don't see that much. Like, you're you know, right. I, you're, right. Not, you're not like Marie Kondo is like really being nice. And like, no one's like talking shit. Yeah. I mean, you watch, like you said, you watch the, like, like I said with me with the Ink Master, you watch that. Those guys cut each other down like crazy. Like your your work sucks. And, you know, it's like nowadays they won't say that. They're like, oh, yeah, well, that, that line was a little crooked, you know, and they won't they won't insult you anymore. Um, right, but you know, you know why uh, the of love shows quit, right? Do y'all know no. the story behind that? Um, do you remember? Uh, let's see. Um, I think her name was Megan. Do you remember that when that show came mm-hmm. out, Vernon? Megan's in love, or Megan wants a millionaire, or some shit. Oh like yeah, that? yeah, Megan. Yeah, Megan wants a millionaire. Okay, yeah. well, she was on. She did her own show, and who's uh, Megan? 
uh, blonde from Flavor of Love. <clears throat> oh, okay. One of the girls. Which I love that it just like it went from one show to another yeah. to another. Yeah, yeah. That means yeah, because there, there was I Love New York. Like New York was, was right, of right. Love. And she there did was Daisy she, of Love. Yep. From Rock of Love. Yep. Right. Um, she did. Two, New York did two. Daisy did one, yep. and then the, the Megan girl did one. Uh, but the, oh, the, the, Megan. the Megan one. Well, you didn't miss it because it was only on for four episodes. The reason why it was only on for four episodes is because after the fourth episode. They found out that one of the contestants kidnapped his girlfriend, killed her, chopped her up, and threw her in the lake. So they pulled it off of the air so they wouldn't have to show that, obviously, she probably picked him at the end. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, it was he was one of the ones that was the front runner up to that fourth or fifth episode. And... Oh. I don't know. It, it wasn't her that was murdered. It was somebody else after, you know, so because, you know, these shows are filmed a long time beforehand. Right, right. So, you know, I don't know what the hell happened. But, yeah, he killed his girl or he killed his girlfriend before coming on the show. Something like that. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. And he I was. Think I, I feel like I have heard that, but I, not in a long time. So it slipped my mind. Yeah. And that's why VH1 pulled all the of love shows, because it was, you know, really <laughs> getting a bad light for them. So then they right. did, so then they just did a bunch of uh, you know, teen mom stuff. Yeah, <laughs> cuz that's good. <laughs> Somebody just told me that they're working on a show. Yeah, yeah, a friend of mine is working on a show that is um like you live in a house with a bunch of No, no, it can't be that. Big brother? No, no, it's 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 like I remember the remember the show Next? MTV's Next. No. So no. basically it's a bus like so so let's say it's me, right? I'm single. There's a bus full of of women that come to to like a location where that has maybe some multiple locations and I'll gonna I'm gonna go on dates with them. But the first person comes off and I go on a date with them and maybe I don't like it and I say next and then another person comes. Sometimes it would happen where someone just gets off the bus and the person goes next, like they just don't like the way they <laughs> Holy <go>. fuck. <laughs> really mean. And and it was like insane. But like sometimes the dates would go well. And then, you know, if, if you're like on your second person and you're like, no, this is the person I like, you you could kind of be like, oh, would you like to go on, you know, would you like to go out another night? And that's sort of like how that person wins. And that person mm -hmm. at that point can be like, no, I'm good. Or or like, you know, that if they say yes, then there's like a whole van of people that that haven't even, you know, there's three other people that haven't even been seen yet. So, and you, you know, that's, that's kind of the trade off. It's like, Oh, I like this guy enough. I, I, but I kind of want to see who else is on the bus. I'm gonna have to look that so, show up. That sounds interesting. Right. Yeah. But I think my, my friend is working on like a newer version of it where nice. I forget if it's cause it, part of me was like, if you, you, if it's just the same show, but you live in a house, that's what, that's what bachelor, that's what everything is. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Unless the person stays, which is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think it's I think it's slightly different, but what, what I definitely love that I, idea. I remember the, one of the first. I don't know if, if it was season one or season two of Rock of Love, but yeah, it's like when all the girls were there and they were mm -hmm. about to go in the house, but then like uh, Big John comes out and he's like, you know, um, you 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 like he's like pointing out to these girls and he's like, y'all y'all are just going, y'all aren't his type. I yeah, like, I do remember that. Holy, like he, just based on nothing, just based on looking at these girls, and it wasn't even Brett that did it. It was just well, a you big know, bodyguard. <laughs> you know, Brett Michaels was in the van, the, the bus, going, no, 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 see, dude. I remember like because uh, this was how much I was into it. Like he was like, dude, I would sleep with anybody. Like he, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't just like you know banging tens like he was taking yeah down, like fucking 300 pounds like anything he was just dude out he's like i love them all I'm like huh. all right Brett. he must have some sort of like sex addiction uh, addiction right like probably yeah. sort of, like just from being on the road for so long and like it's oh, just yeah. he, he needs to find love in odd odd ways i mean dude yeah. the dude was in poison you know how much the shit was, was thrown at him just, in a day how just, much? How much poison? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, you know. How much fucking Aquanet trim? <laughs> <laughs> Aquanet, Jesus Christ! 
<laughs> he, he's probably got Aquanet tattooed on the back of his leg or something, you know? <laughs> I wonder how he's doing now. Um, They should do another. That would be huge if they did another season of, of Rock of Love. Like, he's yeah. like, I still don't have someone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to find someone before I turn 60. I'm still, a, I'm still only a diabetic. Way. I'm still a diabetic. I can die in any minute now. Come on, ladies. <laughs> I have a 25-year-old daughter, and I'm looking for a 21-year-old girlfriend. Uh, at, at about this time, she's probably he's probably got, a, like, a 35-year-old daughter. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, think about it. Look, um, oh, God. I went to see, uh, was it Kiss recently, and those guys are in their 70s. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Gene and Paul are. Yeah, well, yeah, but the other, well, the other two guys are in there. Whoever's pretending to be Ace Freely and Peter Chris. They're in their fifties and sixties. Those two dudes. They've been together. They they've been in the. They were in the band longer than uh, Ace and Chris. Right. So I mean, mm. but do you know this? Speaking of like having a a daughter that you're dating someone who's your daughter's age or younger. Did you know that there's today a living, um, or or maybe he just died, but. The grandson of the tenth president, John Tyler, was alive until like recently. Jesus! Oh, uh, I did not so, know that. Yeah, so John Tyler like had a kid when he was like seventy something. Wow! Like he he had several marriages, and it's like I think it's like second or third marriage, which he was in his seventies. He he also had a lot of kids. When he was like seventy something, he had a kid, right? And then his that son when he was in his like seventies or, or sixties or something had a kid. And that's who just recently, he just, I just actually looked it up. He just recently died. Jeez. So the, a grandson <laughs> of John Tyler, who he, I mean, like he probably didn't as he, he probably didn't spend much time with his grandpa, but you know, but right. Man. It's, yeah. He, no, no time. No, no, they, they couldn't have overlapped. No, they, no, no way in hell. Yeah, that's just oh I, I just think it's it's amazing. I mean, like when you <laughs> it's it's like he was president from 1841 to 1845. My grandfather was around <laughs> when there were 20 states. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Oh, when, my when God. Louisiana was half the country. Yeah. Right. Jesus Christ, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, oh though, man. God. I mean, you know, and and like speaking of the Kiss guys, you know, they have a lot of songs that are like, yeah. you know, there's a song called was it Chris, Christine sixteen, and it's about him and a sixteen year old girl, and I'm going, oh no, and I'm sitting there going, please don't fucking play that song, please don't. Play. I right. mean, that's just creepy. You're, oh you're, no, that's so bad. Yeah, right. But I mean, that song was written when they were in their eighteens and tw- you know teens and twenties. So you know, back then it wasn't so bad, but now it's fucking creepy as shit. Uh, uh, t- even in your twenties, though, like I, I remember, like I was oh. in my early twenties, and I was out one night with some friends, and like, and I'm, you know, I'm talking to this girl i'd like been drinking and stuff and it's like and i'd, I'd quit doing drugs by then but I, you know like i would still drink and i'm like talking to this girl and um and like somehow the subject of drugs came up and this chick looked like she was like i don't know 19 20 years old right and um like i mean she's fucking tall like super developed and i was like yeah man i haven't done that shit since i was like 15 and she was like yeah i can't really say that and i'm like how old are you? And she's like, I'm 15. I just turned and I just shook her hand. <laughs> I was like, it's very nice to meet you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad not, I found this out now. I'm like, not going to jail. Like, thank you. Yeah. I mean, like, cause we were like, we were just hanging out in the back of a car. Like, you know, a friend of ours is driving around and stuff, but you know, I was like, dude, this chick's awesome. She's fucking hot as hell. But yeah, I was like, Nah, oh dude, God. I I can't like. This would only be okay if I was sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, Casey, I don't know what you did as you when you when you did stuff as you were growing up. Like I know Vernon and I never, I know never did anything. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> I, as in like me and Vernon, me and Vernon were were you know in the music 
line as kids you know i mean i'm still do it i still play music every now and then but like we'd go to fucking cd bars at 16 and 17 to, to see shows and stuff i don't know if you ever yeah did stuff like that you yeah. know what i'm saying like you know totally yeah yeah and Staten and Island's got a lot of that yeah yeah and so yeah because i don't know the scene out there that's why i was just curious and, and so like you know like i'll never forget this it was like my my band played our very first show was at a place called the dixie tavern which was like uh, yeah. dude yeah. That, that place uh, uh the local metal legends i hate god they're natural they're a national they're a national act too um it's spelled i don't know if you know i hate god no i don't uh it's spelled e-y-e not like i hate god you know it's like an eyeball but yeah three different things maybe y- yeah um but uh, they did there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but um, they've been around for years, and um, they used to practice above it. And when we'd go to play, you could buy crack outside. Like we'd stand outside. We're just standing out there, and these guys are like, "You want to buy some crack?" No, I'm good, thank you, sir. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> it was it was that kind of area, and uh, I mean, I watched guys get their heads split open with beer bottles, and it yeah. was, it was a real violent club. Um. But now it's a fucking Mexican restaurant. So that just blows yeah. me away. I was like, you know, I watch people pee and screw on a couch in the back of this building mm. that you are now eating at. I was always <laughs> yeah, that is really I just sold beer and bottles there because I was like, it, they always ended up just getting smashed on, you know, like on the yeah. floor <laughs> in front of the stage. And you're like in a pit with just busted beer bottles and people throwing them. And I was like, You'd, you'd think someone would have been like, eh, maybe we should buy a few sleeves of solo cups. And, uh, <laughs> just, yeah, just that's so serve, funny. You're right. These fucking lunatics. <laughs> so, what yeah, kind of- it's not like anyone would ever care or notice, but yeah. So well, maybe maybe there was an environmental thing. Right, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Back in the 90s, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they really they didn't want to waste the plastic. I don't see the number seven on the recycling thing on the bottom of this cup. I'm gonna stab you with a broken uh, <laughs> right. The bottle, bottle. The bottle is so much better. Um, so of course, you know, have you been doing anything with your music? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, um, I put out a record a few months ago. Uh, it's under my name, and it's uh, Measly is the name of the album, which I typically just put like a one word album name good and this one sort of is what it's a it's a title that we will call our dog when she's with like there's a loud noise her like ears go down (laughs) and she looks really measly and so we just started saying that and then i just like kind of love the name of it so i just named the record as an homage um nice but it's cool I, i you know it's like uh 10 10 songs uh there's some of them that like are a little harder than you know i've done in the past but nothing more than like a, a hard Weezer song or something, you know, like yeah, it's, yeah. Or, or, you know, there's somewhere between like pavement and Weezer is like nice. the, uh, the vibe, a little slacker rock. And, um, yeah, it was a fun record to put together and I have like a bunch of new songs now I'm working on for, for the next one. Dude, that's awesome, man. Was, uh, is that the one is that, um, you always win every time. Is that on that one? Uh, yeah, that on yeah. Instagram, that right? one is on that one. Yeah. That's the, that's the first track. Or, yeah. Or you win every time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Like that one. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, yeah it's awesome. been it, it's been fun. It, it's I'm always trying to record and work on songs. It's just a thing that I've always done as a hobby. So it's fun. It's nice to put stuff out there and just let people listen to it. And if they like it, they usually like are nice enough to let me know. And they're like, "Oh, this is cool. This is something I like." And if they don't, they're usually like, "Oh, there's enough to move on to in the world." <laughs> 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 nah, dude, it's cool that you actually do that, though. You know, like a lot of people, they want to put out music but don't. Like, I, like yeah, yeah, you know? I have I have a lot of friends that that uh in a good way put out records. Like they they they're always kind of recording, and once in a while they'll just drop something and just send it to our friends or right. So I always that's that's kind of what I'm always trying to, you know, do is just make music that I think my friends might like. But then I on top of that I do I I'm not. I guess I'm not afraid to kind of put it out there and, um, and see, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. Cause I, you know, there, there are times that I'll write a song and I'm like, I don't know if this fits like, but it's like, who really cares? <laughs> Who right. really, right. no one's going to be like, Oh man, that's it. I'm never listening to him again. I'm not going to talk. Why did he do this? He put yeah. that riff in the wrong spot. Fucker. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so, not going to happen there. And I don't think anything I'm making is too embarrassing. So that's good. No, I mean, everything I've ever heard you do is really good. <laughs> I, I enjoy a lot yeah. of your stuff, so it's it's interesting. It's like I, I I never know. I think a lot of people think either you know I do comedy stuff or I do you know music stuff. I, I've done some stuff with the the Jokers, like on the show, and Practical Jokers, and like um and some jingles for or like some theme songs for some of the guys and stuff. Nice. So it's like I, I I think I'm all over the place in terms of like the range of how serious or 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 goofy the songs are. So I just yeah. kind of write and decide in that moment like which direction it's going to go i used to not try to do any comedy songs at all because i didn't want it to be like i always was like no music i keep it separate and that's like my serious thing <laughs> but then it was like yeah that's not fun i i've got to make i gotta have some fun yeah, yeah. so i I'm, I'm trying not to be too precious about it and yeah i think it's very clear which ones are or not oh yeah yeah for sure i mean we all know the ones that are definitely jokes um so I've I've actually never seen any of the serious ones. Like uh, I remember oh, really? a bunch of stuff before uh, before you were on last time, and and it was all just like funny stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, dude, this dude's fucking awesome. Yeah, I think I think when I mean serious, I mean like not necessarily like intentionally, like not 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 comedic, you know. So like. Uh, okay. You know, like um, there's nothing out there that I'm not like making ballads and I'm not taking myself too right. serious. But like the solo records I've mostly done aren't really like trying to be tenacious D clearly in the direction of I'm having fun. And you, I usually like will kind of go into another piece or, you know, you know, other, you know, maybe use some more piano. Whereas like if I'm writing songs that are, you know, like I'm using serious, but like like that measly record like it's it's you know, it's quirky and it's like it's straightforward and it's usually more rock um so i i guess that's another fit on one of my usual albums i'll try to mm -hmm. just make it like i did a show last night i had these like you know comedic show and it was a character everyone was kind of playing characters and coming out and doing mm -hmm. sets and i had these two tunes one was like this bl weird blues song and i was like okay i'm, I'm gonna do that so i'll lean to that play sort of like a a blue, like a country blues guy as a character. And then I had this other song and I was like, Oh, I guess I could just like country that up and like lean into that voice a little bit. And it, went, it worked really well. I was like surprised that they worked so well together. Cause I had usually done both of those songs, like as myself, like as a presentational comedic piece. But this was, right. I was leaning into the character of like, I dressed in like all denim, denim shirt, <laughs> denim blazer, <laughs> denim pants, boots, like a little, nice. little cowboy hat. So it was like it was I was leaning into this direction, but um, it was fun too. It was so fun to to like kind of be a different person. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've been on stage that much like in, right. in the last year, so it just it felt great. And to just be like kind of singing in a country voice, I, dude, I could yeah. see why it's so. <laughs> I could see awesome. why people love doing it so much. That's so yeah. good, dude. That's so good. Um, <laughs> so. So what else have you been doing, man, besides putting the music out? Have you been doing a lot of work? I mean, you guys been working on stuff or? Not really. We were working a lot. I've had too much time off. Like I've had some personal projects and, and stuff like that, but I, I have had a lot of time off. And I, I, I think the thing that I've been trying to do for the last couple of years and I'm going to continue on, um, maybe I have to stop, but I'm going to try to knock it out actually in the next two months because I only have like one or two more left. It's mm -hmm. play every Legend of Zelda game. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm a, I'm like, I've become like, it's almost become part of my identity that I love these games so much. And it's like, and now I've become this kind of completionist that I'm like, okay, I'm, th I'm basically three games away and only one like mainline, uh, like 3d Zelda game away. And then two Game Boy games. Nice. Uh, and one I've actually even started. So I'm like halfway done with one. So I'm like, two and a half games from the entire series being done and awesome. that's a wild thing to say because i think up until like a couple <laughs> of years ago i had only played one game yeah that's right. that's a lot of yeah. time <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dude, like, like i went to i had to go to la for my wife had some work and so we were doing like a little baby moon and i pl i brought this game skyward sword that was just released for the switch it's like a remake yeah and i i i basically in two weeks beat this game and it 
like I look, it tells you how much time you've spent, and it was like 48 hours. <laughs> and like in two weeks, 48 hours in a game is that's a lot. That's, that's a lot, that's, dude. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's two that's days. Like a pretty heavy part time job. Yeah, like. Like, you talk about that for like me and Justin, uh, rum guy. We met. I don't think you've met Justin on the show yet. He's he's the other co-host. No. Um, we met through Xbox Live, and that's how this show started. Originally, <laughs> the MHOG was a gaming community that played on Xbox, and we wow. de- we decided to. Uh, one of our other friends, Adam, decided that he wanted me to come on his podcast and and do a review of the Avengers movie with him. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I did that with him and I told Justin uh, rum guy, I said, dude, we could do this. Let's do it. So we decided to set up and, and do an episode and we got hooked and now it's almost 10 years we've been doing this, but we played this game. Um, there was two games we played like constantly. We played a game called Chrome hounds, which was a was like a, a a mech game where you can build your mechs and go out and battle people online, which was very cool because it was like around the around the the beginnings of the Xbox 360, right? So that, like that's where it was at. And uh, of course, we played the shit out of Halo Three. Well, mm. we looked at the clock times on those two games. I played over four hundred hours of Halo Three. And, and I, I played over 250 hours on um, Chrome Hounds. And I was like, that's a fucking lifetime, man. Right. <laughs> and in, in some of these people, like, they tell me they play these games like Skyrim and, and things like that yeah. that are like, you know, 200 hour plus playthroughs. And I'm going. And now people do it in 3D. So you're yes. like, you're, there's, a screen, there's a screen on your eyes directly on your eyes you're living in this world for so long I, that's the thing i'll never i don't think i'll ever buy like a decked out gaming no. console or anything no. like that my friend joe does it and i've played a few times and it's okay it's disorienting when you take it off and that's only for like if I'm, like 15 minutes or something like that um yeah I'm not, but uh, the uh, switch i think is probably going to be like my you probably my last console unless really? zelda comes out for whatever next thing is i then i'll probably have to <laughs> that's borrow cool. it or or get that you know I, i'm uh, my wife has a switch i bought her one of the handheld ones it's a really cool system um yeah my, i'm still my favorite is xbox i play that all the time um yeah it's just because it seems pretty cool yeah it's just it's just a fun system to play i mean uh, it has everything all the games i like so that's why i go with it um and uh i've never had a real big problem with the system uh people always give me shit about playing xbox instead of playstation and i'm going nah I was like, dude, I have big hands. Those PlayStation controllers are for like little girls. I can't do that. <laughs> I'll I'll be honest. I, my perspective is really weird because the last console that I purchased, or I, I didn't even buy it because I was so young, was Nintendo sixty four. Nice. And that was the last one that I had. Even so, the Switch was purchased for me from a friend. Like a friend was like, I think you'll love this, and bought it for me. Yeah. And 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 it's like. I had I didn't have anything in between. I didn't know any of those things. So it's really interesting too because like there's always a Zelda game for every console. Right. So I had to figure out ways of how I could like borrow people's, you know, like I had a oh, friend yeah. that had a GameCube and I was like, "Can I borrow a GameCube?" and he was like, "Yeah, no problem, but why?" <laughs> it's like such an <laughs> odd thing. I'm like, "Oh, well, I want to play these games and like the only way to do it." I mean, like I guess there is emulators, but it doesn't I think at that time now, I think I figured it out more because uh, I bought this like little console to play like some retro games and I figured it out. But uh, OK, you got gen- one of those multi game ones. Yeah, like an Ambernick. Uh, yeah. RG three f- something V. I don't know. It's great. Yeah, it's those really, are, it those looks are really like cool. A, the, yeah, it's like this, it looks it's the layout of a Game Boy, which I liked. And I was waiting for. Um, but I, I had to learn all that stuff, too. So it is fun, though, because it's like it really becomes hobbyist. And that's, yeah. that's the 
that's what's really fun. Like there's a lot of times that like I set up a game, I set up a whole thing, and I'll play for a little while, and I spend so much more time fucking getting this thing <laughs> set up and like putting in a new operating system. And like, oh wow, this was like a fan made operating system. This guy made this thing, and I like read all about it, and it's like it's really souped up now. And I play a game for ten minutes, and I'm like, okay, I'll come back to this later. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, I've just uh, spent two hours setting it up. That sounds like setting up for like a Dungeons and Dragons game or some shit. You know, you you set up all your stuff. You got all this shit. You you got all your, yeah. and then like you play and you don't really feel it because you get kind of bored. You know, it takes like three days to play it and all this other stuff. I know. I, my brain loves to like tinker. So like the fact that I could like put in a new operating system, back things up. Like it all speaks to like my 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 brain set i don't know like i, I i'll especially because i used to be I, I like before i i'm mostly like a mac guy but i had like a lot yeah. of pc growing up and i like really loved that i don't know i i really loved oh i had like an android when it like the like one of the the draw like the first droid and i couldn't wait to like root it <laughs> and you know like <laughs> jailbreak jailbreak in and all that stuff i loved that stuff and then i don't really do it much with also the simplicity i think of mac is why i like that stuff too because i don't yeah. have to do it but it was really fun in the early days i remember like all i wanted to do is screenshot which is so easy now right right like right and i use it all the time i think every a lot of people do you screenshot shit all the time yeah. and i remember like the first droid couldn't do it but then somebody was like oh we figured it out in this you just have to tr jailbreak your device and i was like so excited for it and i did it and i like <laughs> you know jail broke the droid i was like i don't know if, i guess i void my warranty like it fucking mattered i had that phone for a year and a half um but like yeah and it, just so i could screenshot and i was like wow screenshots like it was such a big deal well yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's now so weird. now like iphones have a default screenshot folder like yeah in your photos app yep. yeah like <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's come a long way. Yeah, like the other the other day, my home button on my phone died. Like I can't use my home button for some reason. So what kind of what what wait, what is it? Uh, it's an like iPhone a... uh, iPhone like 900. And, you know, it's an old ass iPhone, like a seven. Cool, it's the one with the with the button though. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. My, that, my, yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. So I've I've like okay, so I had to Google how the fuck do I use my phone without my home button? Like I like, yeah. I don't know. But there's this little thing where you can go in there and set it where there's like an actual home button that floats around yeah the accessibility oh, weird. it's folder. yeah, yeah it's you go to super your, cool yeah, your accessibility and there's a bunch of stuff in there that you could customize like triple no click idea. things so that yeah. you, you turn on yeah i had no idea yeah, that I, even existed i had the seven for so long and i just upgraded to like the new ones just because like my wife's phone like she had the six yeah. and hers was basically the, like the battery and it was a third one she could she put in there but the battery would just die like yeah she, it was it was it was basically a landline like it had to be plugged in all the time so she's like you know yeah i, I need to <laughs> update it and it's like like mine was working fine it just had like no memory because it only had like 32 gigs so it's like yeah. constantly having to like delete stuff and shit like that and so now it's like with the 13 like like i feel like i just woke up from like a coma. I'm like, oh my, what are these things you can do on here now? It's nuts. It knows my face. Yeah, I got I got to really upgrade this phone, man. Like it's it's like old, Buck it's falling Rogers. apart, it's dying. Um, I love keeping stuff for too long, though. Me that's, too. That's the other fun challenge yeah. of tech. Is like as much as I do like to know what's kind of what's on the horizon or what's new. There's something like a bragging rights. Like right now, I'm literally using like a my laptop is like a Mac from 2013. Nice. And, uh, oh, it's... Dude, I still have the 10, the silver MacBook Pro. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> you, heard, you heard that? Wow. <laughs> Wait, the one with, but... with a CD, with the CD drive? Yeah. 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 But that doesn't I... work. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's fine. Yeah. I, I actually, I had that one. I bought that one at the time that I think this one here came out <laughs> and I, was like I immediately regretted it. I was like, wait, why did I get the one that was like last model? I think maybe because it was just for the CD drive, and I did end up like it was the first time that there was a lot of CDs that I like converted over, which I just hadn't done. I don't know why, but um, anyway, I 
then I was like, oh, how can I pass this off to another family member so I could get the other one? <laughs> and then <laughs> I got this one. And this one's lasted so – I can't believe it, from 2013. That's like insane. It's it's 2021 yeah. now if you're – if you're listening to this later, which is an insane <laughs> amount. Of time. If this, yeah, 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 you got to think about that because when 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 somebody listens to the, that's another thing we talked about before on the show is this stuff that we record and put out there, it's there forever. Like people can go back from when we started ten years ago and listen to the first horrible show that we did. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, for sure, I know that. Like, you you think that I'm not thinking that when you when we're talking about like. There's an underage girl that I know. Like, <laughs> you think I'm not like, oh god, like all right, how old is age? Okay, everyone's being cool, everyone's being good. Everyone, look at like you hear the ambulance in the background. Yeah, right yeah, I did, I did. That was it's funny. The, it's it's the it's the cancel police from the future. <laughs> They're coming to get you, dude. They're coming to get you. Man, look, you know that's yeah. another thing people need to understand is like, guys, everything that's said on here is in jest. We're, you know, we're not we're characters. Yeah, we're characters. This is yeah. we're not real people. This is fake. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're AI. We're yeah. robots. We we writ- This was written <laughs> for us by someone else. Go after yeah, them. It's actually yeah. It, we're holding up a mirror to society. <laughs> Um, speaking of, speaking Wayne, of, Wayne, that's not even a real name. That's no, a no, name. that's a made up name. Um, yeah. speaking of, uh, stuff written by other people, did you guys see that, uh, I want to say it was Netflix picked up history of the world part two. Really? Wow. They're going, they're going to do a series, um, written by Mel Brooks called oh, Holy shit. history of the world part two. I've, right. I've always loved that, that, that the, the movie was history of the world oh, yeah. part. One. It's oh yeah. Just. It's just so brilliant. I thought so too. I thought it was fantastic because you know, I mean, well, he was brilliant. Period. Like Mel yeah. Brooks is every fucking movie he's ever done is just amazing. Um, I almost wish they would call it History of the World Part Three, just so that people are like, wait, wait, where's two? You know? Yeah, like, that would be good. Another funny. <laughs> that would be good, but but it's not going to be a film. It's just going to be a series. So I don't know how they're going to pull that off, but Mel Brooks is writing some of it, so that's cool. Um, huge yeah I, you know. I could see people like if they had done like part three like you said they would be like no dude there was a there was a part two like it was in the late 80s and they only <laughs> and you... did like four episodes of it but then like <laughs> it disappeared Khan had killed her boyfriend so they, they pulled <laughs> the thing um madeline Khan, she's dead too isn't she yeah <laughs> Mm. Is she? A, yeah, Madeline Kahn died. She died. Like everybody oh, that's been in those movies is pretty much dead. I, I didn't mean to speak ill of the dead. God bless. Oh no, you didn't. It's fine. Um, fixed, fixed it. You know. Right. <laughs> I, I'll edit that in post. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was but, just the character I was doing. But no, man. I really. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be something good, and and I hope it. You know, it, it's going to be tough because I know Mel Brooks is writing, and. I don't think the society is ready for that. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's also like, it could be really crazy because it's like, it's old man to Mel Brooks. So it's like, yeah. it's got old, old man guy too. It's not just. right. Like he could, you know, he could just not give a shit about anything and just write what he right. wants no, to say, would. you know? Yeah. I wonder, it'll be interesting. It'll be, you know, it could be a thing. It could be like a game changer in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. It might it might revert like, us back to being, you know, if you didn't I, I hate to say better, but 70s. You think he's going to give a shit now? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, damn, man, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, and I, and there was one other thing I want to bring up, too, is I recently saw a cartoon on Netflix. I don't know if you guys watch any of those cartoons, but there's one called mm-hmm. Inside Job. Have you seen that? It's brand What's new. It called? It's Inside brand Job. New. Inside Job. It's brand new. Um, it's, yeah. it's pretty brilliant. Uh, it's, it's, you know, along the lines of like big mouth and, you know, it's a foul mouth cartoon, but it's basically about the shadow government that runs the world and everything that is like a company that the shadow government controls and they control, they invent and stop and do everything like the The president's a robot and, and hmm. like all this shit. And it's so so funny and so just like really well written you should check it out it, it's pretty funny all right inside that's job. great i'm gonna i'm gonna check that out that sounds awesome 
Yeah, and if you don't like it, that's fine too. I understand. I mean, my wife can't stand it. She's <laughs> like, she's like, uh, I can't. You know, she's like, I can't take jokes about current events. I'm like, okay. I mean, I like the yeah. joke. I rather the jokes about the current it's, events. It's hard to tell which ones are serious or not. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I, I'm excited to see that. I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll admit, I'm still watching Project Runway, but um, that's okay. I only have. Let's see. I'm on season six, and there's season nineteen now. So you're just a few. <laughs> you're almost there. You're almost <laughs> there, dude. Home stretch. Look, dude. I I sat through. 12 seasons of big bang theory the other like i went through all 12 of them and wow I, yeah how many episodes uh, a season 24 oh my god that's a lot yeah and that's, that might be similar that that might be similar to project runway though because it, there are a lot of episodes i guess how many basically it's like how many ever how many people that they have is how many episodes it takes to get rid of them all you yeah know? so it's like 16 yeah. 16 to 20 at least it's interesting how they must they must have like the first season they must have been like oh the more we lose people like the more we lose stories <laughs> like we just it's so much easier <laughs> to make an episode when you have all these people doing crazy things right, and, like, right. making these dresses and they're all that all that drama i guess it does get more intense though so you you know you feed into that i'm just sorry my television brain is like pr- <laughs> producing it from the past <laughs> So, all right. Why are they cutting the wild card characters? You got to keep them around. <laughs> I know, right? So, Trump's biggest mistake was getting rid of Dice on, on the Apprentice. <laughs> was Dice on the Apprentice? He was. Yeah, <laughs> he was. See, I, I missed all. I missed a lot of good TV. Look, Dice I'm was not on the Apprentice. The bagels or yeah. whatever. It was like something that he, re- he refused to make or something. Yeah, and they got rid of him. Uh, another one that was on there was Priceless. Was my all-time favorite person at a comic book convention lou Ferrigno. no lou Ferrigno, oh, who, lou who i can't fucking mm. stand um <laughs> sorry if, if lou Ferrigno is your friend or you know him i apologize no but, but he was a complete asshole to me and anybody else that i know at co- these conventions like all he all he wanted was his money you know and it was pretty shitty but I'm not the only one that's said that about him. A lot, wow. a lot of yeah. even, even celebrities that have come on the show has said, you know, yeah, he's pretty much a jerk. But yeah. but on the the Celebrity Apprentice, he threatened to beat a woman on TV. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and now he's and now he's writing the new Mel Brooks project. Right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> He wow, can't, that's amazing. You know, and, and, and I'm not afraid of the dude because I know he can't hear this. But uh... <laughs> oh. I mean, he he probably can, but he will not. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is a, that is nice. That like you know, to be honest, I, I I feel like we could say whatever we want, and I don't think it'll get back to Lou Ferrigno. No, and I honestly don't think he would care. I mean, if, no, you know, we're really nobody to him. Right. I mean, and that's know. that's a beautiful thing. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. I don't care. And like I, like I said, you know, I mean, I've met million, uh, many, 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 many other people that were very, very nice to me. Even even if I just went up to someone and said, hey, I appreciated what you did. You know, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm not going to buy anything from you, you know, but I, I just wanted to say thanks. You know, and that's of- why I was surprised to hear that you did have my book because that's that's what you did to me. You came up to me at a convention. And you said thanks for what you do. I don't have any money. I'm not <laughs> buying anything. Well, technically, you're like, wrong. Right. You lying sack of shit. Because I bought two books from you this past weekend. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> you, I handed you the money. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't remember those conventions at all. <laughs> like, I, I, it's yeah, I get on aut- autopilot. <laughs> but no, you're you're. But I don't uh, remember seeing you there. But your what you call it your um, uh, of love book you actually gave me that. Oh okay. Yeah yeah cool. you gave me that one. Um, All right, so you owe me twelve bucks. Yeah yeah fuck off. <laughs> um anyway but no Casey <laughs> uh do you have anything upcoming that you want to talk about? Uh besides uh, the baby. Well, um, other than no, your um... <laughs> your amazing baby coming. Yeah that that drops uh December twenty third. <laughs> <y'all>. Yes word. <laughs> um, really your knows, due though. date the due date is December twenty third. Yes. Wow. You're going to have a baby release party. That, that That's going to be a hell of a of a, a Christmas present. I know. That's why I've, de- I've decided I'm going to get no Christmas presents for anyone. 
I don't blame you. My, except, except for my wife, of course. But oh, yeah. Nothing for anyone else. Damn, uh, that's like, crazy. You know, it's like everyone's going to understand that I'm stressed out. Yeah. One one of the things that I discovered after, like, having my daughter, like, when she was a baby, um, corn dogs are really good because it's, like, it's meat, it's bread. If you dip it in ketchup, that's a vegetable, and you only need one hand to make it and eat it. <laughs> so it's, like, a, a wow. lot of times I was just holding her, and I'm like, okay, cool. This is, this is just any kind of one-handed food you can make and eat and you know you, you you're not boiling anything so you can yes. you yeah like put it in the oven um and you know put the baby down when you're putting them in the oven um you not sure. put, don't put the don't oven. put yeah. the baby in the oven not, you meant the right, corn yeah. dogs okay let me write this down <laughs> yeah that's that's why she's a only child now uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man <laughs> man we went from birthing babies tiny penises mel brooks uh mm-hmm. comedy um to cooking baby reality love shows yeah celeb yeah. shows cooking babies Roasting and babies. we did it all guys yeah we, we did it this, all this has oh. been a great great show man oh, i pre- dude, always appreciate I you guys say, having me oh, oh sorry I what i want to mention your uh your zoom interruption oh yeah uh, skit that you posted <laughs> was fucking hilarious that was i'm is it stupid cool was that real um <laughs> yeah uh yeah how, yeah we knew how so did the, y'all crash a zoom uh presentation so the truth is the the main lawyer who played it so perfectly jody sellers is um was in on it and then, oh, okay but he didn't tell any of his staff and they he said that sometimes <laughs> they have other lawyers pop in um but like so they all those women had no idea so it's a pretty fun. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's listening, fucking amazing. Go to, go to Casey's Instagram page, and it just says like, Casey and Patrick crash a Zoom meeting, I believe. And yeah. It, it was fucking hilarious. It's like what fifteen minutes or something, and yeah, it is. I mean, the real thing uh, was like we did it for like forty-five minutes. <laughs> We had to like cut it down. Like that's the longest it could be on Instagram. I think there's a longer one on YouTube. Oh, oh my god! Okay, well, I'm looking that up afterwards. Cause, dude, I was dying. That was fucking hilarious. Cause like I've, uh, like my wife has been working at home since the pandemic, and she was actually going back to work for a little bit, and now she got a new job. That's like it's in California, but she's able to like just telework from home. Mm. times that's cool so it's like i know all about zooms like we had a zoom wedding and so just like seeing that and seeing what you guys were doing was fucking hilarious that's awesome thanks I, yeah it's it, it that stuff I mean, we want to do more we're trying to actually like, yeah please pitch it to like we almost did one for facebook like a weird like division of facebook wanted us to go and do it and then we were like, we only want to do it if they pay us a lot of money, and they wouldn't. And so we were like, okay, then we're not going to do it. Yeah, hey, I don't right. blame you. That's, That's a, a fun, yeah. a fun brag that we turned we turned down a gig from Facebook. That's right, no Facebook. Nice. <laughs> yep. Well, well, I mean, they're they're kind of tight on money. They're you know, they're <laughs> still kind of finding their yeah. footing, so you you can't blame them. They're for, still figuring out their name. Right. Pension right. Pen- yeah. <laughs> oh God. Ugh. Oh man! Yeah, but, well, dude, dude uh, big fan. Yeah, like we love your stuff. We, you know, oh, every, thank you. A, everything you put out is is you, it's fucking great. It's funny. Um, keep up the good work, please, because you know at least you have you know you know we're watching for sure. I'm sure there's lots yeah. of other oh, people. Oh, that's but, so nice. But, you guys are so nice. This is so fun. Anytime you guys want, I'm on the show. I love it. Sweet man, we appreciate it. Anytime that. I'm making something with prosciutto, I'm always like prosciutto. <laughs> yeah, I, and it's yeah. funny. Your, it's so your good. Your Staten Island shit is fucking <laughs> infectious. It is. How often are you making stuff with prosciutto? I love to hear that. <laughs> uh, dude, like my wife and my daughter both love it, and so it's like oh. if I'm if I'm making like carbonara pasta or like any kind of wow. sandwiches, they do they like like prosciutto wrapped around cheese sticks that you can get at like Trader oh. Joe's and shit like that. And, you got to try like, now. You got. You got to get him into Gobble Goal. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> gobble Goal. That's that's so or Gobble Ghoul. Uh, it's uh, actually it's actually Capicola is the pronounce is the real way it's spelled and should be okay. pronounced. But in Staten Island, Cap Capicola became Gobble Goal. 
Gabagool. <laughs> or Gabagool. Like, I'll, I'll get a pound of Gabagool. And so basically, it's just like a spicy, it's like a good spicy meat. It's great. All right. I'm on it, dude. I love, I I love Gabagool. I love prosciutto. I love supersad. Yeah. Uh, supersad is actually suppressida, which is another oh, spicy yeah. one. But it, in Staten Island, it's, supre- it's supersad. Super yeah. sad. I like that. Yeah, dude. Like when I'm writing it on my grocery list, it's just like P R O J O O T. Prosciutto. Yeah, yeah. Like trivial prosciutto. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fucking great, man. Oh, um, <laughs> well, well. I tell you what, dude. Let let everybody know where they can find your stuff and you know all that good stuff. That way, they yeah. Uh, mostly just at Casey Jost on pretty much everything. Uh, I guess everything right now is really just Instagram. I occasionally (laughs) Twitter, but really just right now, just Instagram. Um, You know, you might get some dog pics uh, and some baby pics eventually, maybe too much of that. So if that, if that excites you, you know, please. Nice. You know, smash the subscribe. (laughs) Oh, you're an influencer, man. You're an influencer, dude. You're an influencer. Totally. I'm, right, I'm above. I'm above the influence. That's right. That's right. Well, like we said, man, you are always, always welcome on the show. Anytime you want to just come on and hang out, you, you just let me know. You can even come guest host. I appreciate. With, it. You can come guest host with us if you want, man. If we got a guy or somebody you want to come on and talk to, look, you're always welcome. Great. Hit me up. But um, all right, guys. I was your host, Wayne. I was your co-host, Vernon. And I was Casey. And as always, remember to keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, That's it. Get the fuck.